Hi, I'm Don Summers with um, Don Summers Fashion Studio, and this is our first tutorial. This is the very beginning to help you learn how to sew. I have many machines out here today, um, six different kinds, so that you can learn on um, all of the machines. So if you know the basic um, parts, the basic components, and you learn how they work, you can sit down at any machine. I know when you get used to a certain sewing machine, you get comfortable with it, and that's the one you always go to. Um, but if you know how to work a, a, a variety of brands and a variety of um, stitch selections, you'll be able to sew on whatever. So we're gonna today look through the different machines. I have, um, like I said, six different brands, um, several different brands, uh, but different faces, different looks. And I'm gonna go through the main parts of the sewing machine. And on a, a different platform, you can print off my um, basic parts of the machine and fill them in as you go um, as part of learning. Um, but today we're gonna to get started over here. So the first machine we're gonna look at, this is a Kenmore and it's an old machine. This was a machine that my parents gave me when I was going to college and we won't talk about the year, um, but it's been a while. So, uh, but I, I starting with this one because the, um, the information is so straightforward. Um, but the first part of every machine is getting it hooked up. So, um, I'm gonna show you the different parts. Every machine, of course, has a presser foot. Um, many of the machines either have the cords together, like this one does, so the actual plugging cord and the presser foot cord is all in the same component. And all the machines have their hooks on the side. So I'm just gonna hook this guy in and turn him back around and we'll turn him on first because I already got him plugged in down below. So that's the first part today is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the different ways they all plug in. This is a small Janome. Um, it's a, one of the most inexpensive machines. Um, you can get these for probably uh, 50 $60 in the store. Turn him on so they'll all have a little different look. Let's put them here. And then our next machine, we're going up in price a little bit as we walk across here. This is a brother machine um, that also is an embroidery unit. So when we look at the end of it, you'll see different features. And that is because it has um, the embroidery cartridge to go with it. This one, the presser foot is separate, so we're gonna plug him in. And I've dropped my cord. And we'll just bring him around the front here and we will plug him in. And turn him on and see if we got it. There we go. The next machine, this is a Janome. Um, this is the Magnolia, and it is, um, this one was purchased for a school. This machine belongs to our middle school, and this is what the students use. It's a great machine as well. The presser foot and the cord are all hooked together. We will get this guy plugged in and turn on. Oh, he was already on. There we go. The next one, this is an older machine, but it's one of those really good heavy duty machines. Um, the Berninas are all metal parts and it is heavy. It's a great machine. It also has separate parts. So we are gonna plug in first the cord and second the presser foot. And we're gonna turn them on. He's a little slow. We get in there. The last machine, we're going to call this the Cadillac of the machines. Um, this is a Janome. Um, it's an upper end Janome. It does some um, embroidery as well. And But the end is still the same way to plug in. We have a separate cord. We will plug in. And a separate presser foot cord, which goes right above it. Nope right down here. Nope, oh, it's right up here. There we go. And let's see if we got him turned on. Yes. 
So as you can see, no matter what machine you have, they all have a cord and a presser foot. First things to do to get them turned on before we get started. Um, now we're gonna talk about some of the basic things on the machine. We're gonna start back down here with our Kenmore. And we're gonna talk about the three things that make you sew. The stitch selection, the stitch length, and the stitch width. They all have them on all their machines. So if you look here at this machine, um, it even says stitch selector. So my knob that's on the side will turn and you can change and choose whatever stitches you want. And if you look up here on this guide, if you want the yellow pieces, you have to actually turn that knob down to the yellow to be able to choose those stitches. So this is your stitch selection. Then when we talk about the stitch length, how long of a stitch do you want? So when we turn it back up here, if you want it really small, we're gonna stitch it a number one. If you want a normal stitch is about 2.5. Um, if you want basting, then you can turn it clear up to four. That is your stitch length. I'm gonna set it back at 2.5. The stitch width, if you turn your selector over to a zigzag, you can choose how wide you want the stitches to be. And we'll play with those after a while. Move back down here to the Janome. Like I said, this is a less expensive machine. And here's your stitch selections, what they look like. And here's how you, how you get to what you want. So the first one, um, the first three are just your straight stitch. And instead of the stitch length being a button to choose, you just have three knobs. So the first one is really short. The second one is probably your 2.5, your main stitch. And your third one is your longer stitch. Then you move to your zigzag. So this is also your stitch width. So you can see if you want a small little zigzag, um, a bigger and wider zigzag, or um, taller and narrow. So that's what the stitch selection and the stitch length and the stitch selector are all in one area, which of course is cheaper to manufacture. One other item I forgot to mention on the first one, when you're stitching, you always wanna be able to have a reverse and here's your reverse. You just push the knob down. Back on the Kenmore, you just push the button in to reverse, okay? Now, when we move up to this Brother, it's a nicer machine. Um, this is also an embroidery unit, um, but your stitch selection is right here. So you have more stitches that you can select and you just punch in the number that you want for your stitches to be. Your stitch length um, and your stitch selector is up here. I have it on a straight stitch. There's a 3.0 um, length. If I hit the next button over, that's your 2.5. If we want to do a zigzag, we just change um, the screen and we can do a zigzag. So this one is computerized, but those are your main features and your stitch, stitch selection guide right here. If you want to um, reverse and back up, you just hit that button and it'll reverse. This one has a few more cool features that I'm just gonna show really quick. Um, it has the feature to clip your thread when you're done sewing and it actually has a stitch um, without the presser foot knob. So if you um, didn't want to use the presser foot, you could stitch and have it go here. Um, finally, the coolest feature is speed control. And I recommend speed control on all beginners. So if you are beginning and you want it to stitch slow, you keep the knob clear over to the left and it will go slow. It drives me crazy to stitch on the slope. And then as you get more used to it, you can move your knob over and go faster. So this is a really, really nice feature. And I've changed something here that it doesn't like. Okay. So moving on to the next one. So your stitch selector, um, you can see all of your stitches here along the side and you can choose them um, with the blue diagram. So do you want a straight stitch? And this one actually, B or A, you can move the needle over as well, but you, have, you just guide based on what you're seeing here for the letter. So if you wanted a zigzag, we'll just go to D as a zigzag. Um, you select them from here. Here's your stitch length. How long do you want your stitch to be? Um, if you want it 2.5, which is pretty normal, that's what it's set on. And if you want to move down to your feature 
selections down here, you have to move it over on the, the pink as well. So it's just getting to know how to use the different machines. Your width, stitch width, what do you, how wide do you want your zigzag to be? It can be very narrow at one, or you can move it clear up to five. So those are your main features. When you reverse, you just hit your knob down and it will reverse for you. So you can see they all have the same features, just set up a little different. So here's the Bernina. This is what I use most of the time and it's um, computerized. Um, so our stitch selection we have right here on the side. Um, I usually stitch at one, just a regular stitch. And if I want it to be um, tighter or longer, here is my bar. And I just arrow up. I'm at about 2.5 right now. And I can go clear up to a long length of five if I want. Can you see that on there pretty well? Good. And then if I want to change it to, I'm gonna put that back down at 2.5. If I wanna change it to a zigzag, I'll hit my number two and I get a zigzag and I can make the width whatever I want it to be. Um, it, it kind of adjusted the length to me, for me to give an approximate good length. But if I wanted a narrow zigzag or a wider zigzag. Um, finally, the stitch selection, it looks like you don't have very many stitch options on this machine, but actually you have a lot. This machine you have um, 99 stitch options. So other than your first 10, you have a whole bunch of cool different stitches that you can use and all we have to do is plug in the number. So if I wanted 95, number 95 then it will change all of your information up there for you and you just put your um, fabric in and it'll stitch at whatever the picture shows so really really cool machine and my reverse is just a little um, bar here i just push the bar in and it will reverse for me there's a, um, also some other cool features that go with this one that we won't go over because we're just talking about basics um, this machine is, like I said, the Cadillac. This is the coolest machine. Um, it has a lot of different options for it. So your stitch selection, voila, is right up here. You have a lot of different options. I don't even, I haven't even counted them. I don't even know how many options you have. Um, but in order to get to those options, you just plug in the number. So for example, if you, do, if you want this stitch up here that says number 14, um, you just plug in number 14. And if you want clear down here, if you want to do some embroidery with some different lettering, um, you have to choose a different mode. So mode four, I would actually hit mode and change it to four. And then I would plug in the number that I want from that stitching. So that's your stitch selection. Your stitch length, I'm gonna come back to um, one mode in your straight stitch. You actually, here's your stitch length, 2.5 is your standard. If I wanted it longer, oops. One, oh one, and then stitch number one. Oh, there we go. There we go, so we're back. Um, stitch length, if I want to increase it, you just push the button arrow up or arrow down. We'll put it back at two point. And then stitch width will change based on how wide or narrow you want it to be. Your reverse is also right over here. You just push the button when you're stitching and it has the reverse. It, this one has the cool clipping of the threads and it has speed control as well, which is super, super nice when you are doing, when you're beginning sewing. So those are your basic, basic features. Uh, we're gonna move back down the line and talk about the next set of features. Um, we're going to talk about um, just kind of how the machine is working. So over on the side of every machine is called the balance wheel. This is what moves your needle up and down. I always try to go forward with my wheel if I ever need to move anything, just because that keeps the stitches moving forward. When you back up, sometimes they lock and you get a mess underneath, um, but that is your balance wheel. So every machine has the balance wheel. This one isn't as smooth. It's a, not as inexpensive as, of a machine. Um, so they all move pretty smooth. We won't go through all of them. 
Then you have your spool holder. So this is what holds your spool of thread. This machine had two. Um, you can see that one is misplaced or lost. Um, it is a little bit of older machine. Um, so your stitch um, spool holder, and we're not gonna thread it right now, but there's um, thread guides and different things to go through to thread your machine. And then down here below, all of this we'll be working with as well. I'm gonna put my needle up. Um, so all of the machines have, of course, a needle and the different sizes depend on what you're sewing with. And you can take those um, needles out easily. I'm gonna lower my needle a little bit so you can see. These just roll forward and your needle comes right out. So if you need to change a needle, it is super easy. And then if I have my glasses on, I could probably see to get it back in there better, but we'll stick it back there and tighten it back up. So very, very easy to change a needle out. If you need to change a presser foot, they all are a little different. This particular one, you just loosen, maybe. I guess I'm not gonna loosen it just here by myself, um, but you can change these out and I'll show you on some of the others. And then there's a lift bar um, that's in the back that you put your presser foot down or lift it up. Your um, feed dog is the, the lines underneath and as your wheel moves, you can see the feed dog is moving and it's moving, it comes up and lifts and moves to the back and that is what moves your material for you. So that's the feed dog. This is the throat plate that has all of your information that we will be going over in another tutorial. And um, finally, you have this particular one has the bobbin, a uh, top drop bobbin. Um, the machines also have little compartments. Let me see how this one comes off. Oh, it just lifts off. And you can um, make your sew space more narrow for little tight um, things, hems and different things like that. And this also holds different, anything that you want. So I have, a, I have another presser foot in there and some needles, and then it just hooks back on. So that's the basic part. So if we come over and kind of look your um, thread spool is weird on this one. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see it. It's tucked up there in the back and it just sits out and you put your spool on and you um, thread your machine. And it has different guides, once again, that we will thread in another tutorial. Same thing with your needle. You can undo it, your presser foot up and down, your feed dog moves as it stitches. And this, I believe, comes off straight so that you have your little space. And, oh, it has an end that you put any extra pieces in. Um, same thing here. This one, for the spool holder, um, it actually is tucked kind of down in there. And if you have one where the thread comes straight off, you have to have a cover on them. If you don't, then the thread will get caught around the top edge because sometimes it's kind of rough. So you need the spool holder, number one, to keep it on, but also to keep it from snagging. And once again, you have your different guides and we'll go over those in another tutorial. And when you get down here at the bottom, here's your little thread or your needle where you unscrew it and loosen it and the needle will drop out. Your presser foot bar lift up and down. And this light isn't very bright. And your presser foot, that one comes off easy. You lift the little bar in the back and then to put them on, you just line up your bar with the top part and I'm gonna grab it. Of course, I can't grab it because I can't see exactly where I'm going. There we go, and grabbed it. And your throat plate, and this one has a top drop button or bobbin, and we will wind these up in another tutorial. And then moving on to the next one, your wheel is working pretty good. Here's your thread holder, it doesn't move. Um, spool holder, excuse me, and here's an end that you can cover it with once you put your spool on and all of your guides to get down to thread your machine. And once again, to unscrew your needle, to change the needle out, you can press your little lever there and your presser foot came off to where you could get a different one. And if I had my glasses on, I could see what I was doing there. There we go. And your um, throat plate again, and this is a top drop button. And this bar also comes off 
so that you can sew in a smaller area and have different compartments here to hold your extras. As we get a little fancier, um, this machine, of course, has your um, wheel to move your machine. You have a spool holder in the front, and then this one is super cool and has one that lifts up in the back. I always use this one so that my thread can come directly off instead of off the front. Uh, so that's a really nice added feature. All of your thread guides, which we will go over later, um, and with your uh, needle, you can unscrew that and your needle falls as well. Um, your, your bar is clear in the back on this one. Um, your feed dog and your throat plate is much smaller on this one and it's a bottom case with the bobbin and we'll go over that in another tutorial as well. And as we move down to our fancy guy, if you lift up the bar, here is your um, thread that you can put on and have your, um, your cover on it, your case on it. Ooh, that's cool. All kinds of fancy little features on this one. All of your guides have markings on them so you can see what you're doing. Um, as you thread it, you come down, same thing. You have the little knob that you unscrew to get your needle out, um, your presser foot, lift bar in the back. Um, getting your presser foot off, same thing. You push it in the back. You have a nice big throat plate that has a lot of information for you. And your um, it's a top drop bobbin that we'll go over in another tutorial. And this one has a lot of space as well. And it even has a lot of extras with it. But you have your, your main space right there. So that is the main parts of the sewing machine. Um, I believe that we've gone over all of the information. So once again, the idea is knowing the basic parts of the machine, you could sit down at any one of these machines and run it. You might have to look for things, but you know what to look for and you know how to find it. So we're gonna leave this tutorial and stay tuned. We're gonna jump right into how to thread your machine, how to wind a bobbin and put your bobbin case in. So see you in a bit.